And which brings me now to the hadith of the three men who were trapped in the cave. The hadith, my dear brothers and sisters, is narrated in so many authentic books, Bukhari, Muslim, Tirmidhi, and others, and you will find it, as I said, on uh, page 22, hadith number 12 of Riyad al-Salihin. The had long hadith is as follows. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abdullah ibn Umar narrates the hadith, he says, Three men amongst those who came before you set out until one night came upon them. As the night came upon them, they wanted shelter. So they went into a cave to sleep the night away from the storm and the rain. When they awoke in the morning, they found to their surprise that the entrance of the cave was completely blocked by a huge rock that had fallen because of a landslide. Blocked them. They were trapped inside. No way out. They knew that if they had stayed there, they were all going to die. There's no way out. They'll just star starve to death. So one of them said to the other friends, and these were people who existed before the time of the Prophet ﷺ. One of them said to his friends, Wallahi, we have no other hope except for each one of us to sit in a corner alone and secretly call upon Allah and mention a very sincere and honest secret act of goodness that they have done for the sake of Allah truly and for no one else. That no one else knows about except they and Allah about their intentions and mention that good deed in the hope that our Creator will allow us to use that good deed like a, you know, like a free card to release us from this cave. So the first one, obviously how do we know this? The Prophet ﷺ was told by the angel Jibreel. This is a secret, nobody knew it. Jibreel ﷺ told him about their intentions, it existed a long time ago. He said, the first one put his hands up and secretly said, Oh Allah, I used to be a farmer and I, and I had sheep and goats and I used to go and graze them far away in the land. I had a wife and children and two elderly parents who were disabled or elderly parents who were weak. And I had a habit every time I came back from looking after my sheep before sunset I would milk whatever milk there is from their grazing of the day and I would go and give my parents milk before my wife and children and before myself. One day there were no trees for my sheep to graze in so I had to go further away, like maybe kilometers away. He said as a result I returned back and it was dark. I went to do my usual act of milking the uh, the, the livestock that I had and when I came to see my parents I found they had gone to sleep so I didn't want to disturb them to wake them up you know when you wake up people they get a little bit frightened or sometimes they get into a bit of a distress he didn't want to cause his own parents distress he was a very dutiful young man to his parents he said I stayed beside them carrying the milk in my hand, waiting for them to wake up. And my children were hungry and they were crying. But I refused, I thought my parents were more important. And then when they woke up, I gave them the milk and then I fed my children, my wife and myself. Oh Allah, if you know that I did this truly only for your sake and for no other reason, then save us from this cave. After a little while, they noticed the rock had moved a little bit, but not enough. His good deeds weren't good enough. <laughs> the second person said, Oh Allah, I had a cousin, a woman, a young cousin woman, who I fell passionately in love with. And my love for her grew me so intense that I was obsessed with her. So, one day she fell in, there was a famine and I had money 
So she came to me for help, and I gave her 120 dinars. In exchange, I said, on condition that you sleep with me. Because of her destitution and everything, and because of hunger and, and all that, she accepted. And then when I met with her in private, and I was about to do the haram, she said to me a word, My cousin, fear Allah, and do not take me except in the halal way. He said, I feared Allah and something came you know, down into my heart of fear. And even though I tempted for and obsessed over, I left her for the sake of Allah. Oh Allah, if you knew that I did that for your sake and honestly and truthfully, wholeheartedly, then save us from this cave. The rock moved a little bit, but not enough. The third person said, Oh Allah, I had a big business of livestock and farming. And one day I hired some workers to do a job. And when they finished, I gave each one their due. And one of them, he said, don't worry, I won't take it now. I'll come another time. So he left. He said he left and never came back for years. So I used his money to put it back into the business and invest it. And my wealth grew from, his, from the wealth that he put in. He came back years later and said, I would like my wage. So I looked and I said, see everything you see here in this section? This was all the profit from your money that I still owed you. All of it is yours. Take it or half of it or whatever. And he said, are you mocking me? You're going to give me all of that? He says, Wallahi, I'm not mocking you. This was from your money. And he took it all and did not leave one, leave one thing. He said, oh Allah, if you know that I did that act only for your sake and honestly save us from this cave. Until finally the rock moved and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. What does this hadith mean? Let's go into it a little bit. The first one is the act of sincerity and honesty. They all did acts for the sake of Allah and nobody knew about it. If you want your act to be powerful and to be accepted by Allah in the highest degree, then do it in secret and don't tell anyone about it. And leave it between you and Allah truly. Number two, you are allowed to use your acts of goodness, of righteousness, as an intercessor when you make dua. Oh Allah, I believed in you. Oh Allah, I prayed for you. Oh Allah, I did this for someone. If you know I did it from my heart, today I ask you for this. Some people, they said to me, isn't this like bargaining? Isn't this like blackmail? I said, subhanAllah, obviously people need to read more and research more about the deen. But we live in a time where we do have to explain a lot. And that is that they're not bargaining. They're not doing anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this good deed. And he gave us rewards for it. And you can choose to use a bit of it now. And Allah will take some of its rewards from the hereafter and give you here. And leave the rest for the hereafter. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be merciful to you. And allow you to use it here and in the hereafter. He'll keep it for you. Why? Because Allah wants you to keep your connection with Allah. Allah wants you to know how merciful He is. He wants something that keeps you talking to Allah back and forth. Otherwise, if there's nothing, there's no real meaning. So this is the relationship we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's through actions of good deeds that you do for the sake of Allah. And Allah doesn't get anything out of it. But it's only for you. So this is another thing. Number three, very important. Did you realize, brothers and sisters, that they were friends? That they went together? Did you realize how they were good friends? Did you realize how they remind each other of Allah? What does this tell you? It tells you, brothers and sisters, the company that you hang around with in this life, the friends that you mostly hang around with, will determine what kind of person you are, what kind of deen you have, what kind of hereafter you'll have, what kind of actions you'll end up doing, the way you're going to think and the way you're going to act. Friends influence friends. Yani, there are some friends you can't get rid of. And there are some friends you can limit your contact. And there are some friends you choose and you like to hang out more with. Hang around with the friends that remind you of Allah more. 
The one who says to you, hey, I'll call you, we'll go to masjid together, we'll come to the class together. If you do something wrong, they remind you. If it's time for salah and you're out, they say, let's go and pray. If you're about to do something, haram, say, no, nah, bro, what are you doing? We won't do that. You want to go to a place where it's not good, the friend says to you, no, nah, bro, I'm not going to go there. If they don't want to be your friend, they'll help with them. But a friend will say, mashallah, thank you, bro, wallah. You know, every time I ask Allah, I had a friend who, once, who used to say every morning, used to say, oh, Allah, let the people you love be my company today. And he says, it never failed. Come to the masjid, meet people who remind you of Allah. So the friendship has an effect on your worship and what happens to you. These friends, because they were together, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist them and help them. Can you imagine one of them had no good deeds and all he had was sins? They would have stayed in the cave forever. It needed all three. Do you understand how friends affect friends spiritually and worldly? Also, we find the gathering. The gathering that you choose to stay in has an effect on you as well, spiritually, mentally, physically, and with your heart and mind. My beloved brothers and sisters, the story of the three men trapped in a cave is a profound lesson from a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These men were caught in a sudden storm while traveling and they sought shelter in a cave. However, a massive boulder rolled down and blocked the entrance, leaving them trapped with no way out. They realized that only Allah could save them from this dire situation. So they turned to him in sincere supplication. Each man mentioned righteous deed they had done solely for the sake of Allah and asked for his help through it. As each man invoked Allah recounting their deeds, the boulder shifted little by little until the entrance was completely clear and they were able to escape safely. This story teaches us that the immense power of sincere good deeds done purely for Allah's sake. When we do acts of kindness, resist sin or uphold honesty, Allah notices and rewards us in ways we may not expect. In times of difficulty, these deeds can become a means of seeking Allah's mercy and help, reminding us to live our lives with sincerity and devotion to Him. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.